Welcome back. So like I promised in a previous video, today I'll be showing how to install GPU overclocking tools on Linux, which will allow you to set custom fan curves, adjust the power limit and voltages, and modify the boost frequencies of your GPU. For NVIDIA cards, I'll be installing an application called Green with Envy, or GWE for short. And for AMD cards, I'll be installing an application called Core Control. Before we begin, I just wanted to mention that if you appreciate these sort of guides and tutorials, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. Doing this really helps the channel grow, so thanks in advance. Alright, so let's jump straight into it and start with NVIDIA GPUs. Like I just said, we'll be installing an application called Green with Envy. I'll leave the link to this page in the video description. Now the preferred method to install this is by using Flatpak, which means that these steps will work for any Linux distro. I'll be doing this today on Kubuntu 24.04, but as I just said, this should work for any of the other distros. Just make sure you have the NVIDIA drivers installed first, which I've shown how to do in previous guides. Also, this application is not compatible with Wayland, which shouldn't be a surprise since NVIDIA has always had poor support for Wayland. But support is starting to improve, so hopefully things are different moving forward into the future. Now if we scroll down you'll see there are distro specific packages available for Arch and Fedora, so if you prefer to avoid Flatpak and you use one of these distros, then you might want to do that instead. But it turns out the developer of this app actually recommends using the Flatpak version, so just keep that in mind. And of course you could always build and install this from source, but for most people it's easier just to install using Flatpak, so let's go ahead and do that now. If Flatpak isn't already installed on your system then you'll need to install it first. Click this link and then click on the logo for your appropriate distro. I actually clicked on Ubuntu instead of Kubuntu here, but the steps are mostly the same. The only difference is if you want to install the plugin that will integrate Flatpak into your desktop environment. But personally, I won't be installing that. So all you need to do is copy and paste this command to install Flatpak. If you're running an older version of Ubuntu, then you'll need to add the repo first before installing, which can be done with these three commands but for most people this won't be necessary. Now let's scroll down and you'll see the step to install that plugin I just talked about. You'll notice this command has gnome in it, which is meant for vanilla Ubuntu. If you clicked on the Kubuntu logo in the previous page, then you'll notice this step has plasma in it instead. But like I said, this isn't required, so I'm just gonna skip this. Next, you'll want to add the Flathub repo, so go ahead and copy and paste this command. After that's done, restart your computer before continuing. Now we're back and we're ready to install the application, so let's copy and paste this box first. Now copy and paste these two commands to install it. I ended up removing the comment here, but I don't think this was necessary. You can leave it how it is and it should be fine either way. Now press enter to confirm and it will list the packages that will be installed. Then push enter again to confirm. Now it's installed, so let's go ahead and run it. Go to your start menu and type green with envy and click on it. And here it is. You'll notice there's a bunch of information about your GPU, a menu to change the fan curve, and some other things. But you'll also notice that the overclock profile section is grayed out. We'll need to do a few extra steps to unlock this section. So let's go back to the instructions and scroll down to the FAQ section. It turns out we'll need to modify this cool bit setting and set it to 12 to enable overclocking. So let's click this link and then copy this command here. Now I'll go back to the terminal and before pasting the command we just copied, be sure to type sudo then space. And now I'll paste the command and replace the word value with 12, just like you see here. Then push enter. This warning message is normal and you can ignore it. Now it turns out, if you plan to modify the power limit and want this to survive after reboots, then we'll need to do an extra step, but I'll come back to this in a minute. Let's first see if the overclocking menu is available now. 
So I'll reopen the application, and as you can see that section is no longer grayed out, and we can modify it now. Click the drop down menu and select new profile. Now you can name this profile, and set your desired clock speed for both the core and the memory by setting an offset. I'm actually going to set a minus 90 MHz offset on the core for better efficiency and lower temps. Now click apply and then click save. Now you'll also notice there's a slider here to modify the power limit. But like I mentioned this won't persist between reboots. We'll need to do an extra step as I'll show here in a minute. But while we're here let's also set a custom fan curve. So click this drop down menu and change it from auto to custom. Now click this pencil on the right hand side to modify the values. Simply change the temperature and the duty values to your custom preference using the sliders. Next give a name to this custom profile and hit save. Now you can exit this box and click apply here to set your custom curve. So now let's set an auto start script so that the application starts every time we log into the system. If we click the box at the top right and go to preferences, you'll see there's a setting here to launch at login. If you're an Archer Fedora user and installed the system package instead of the Flatpak package, then this option should be available. But since we're using the Flatpak version, it's grayed out. We'll need to create a custom script to start it at login. To do this, I'll create a new file and name it autostart.sh. I'm creating this file in my documents folder but you can save it anywhere you'd like. Now edit this file and enter the following code. I'll include this code in the video description to make it easy for you to copy it. Now save the file and close it. Now right click the file and go to properties. Go to permissions and check this box that's called is executable, then push ok. Now the next step will depend on which desktop environment you're using. Since I'm using KDE, I'll go to the start menu and search for auto start. Next I'll click on add, and then add login script. Now I'll select my auto start.sh script that I just created, and now restart the system. You can do the same thing on other desktop environments as well, but the process might look slightly different. Now when you log back in, the application should automatically start down in the system tray. Click on it and you'll notice that our custom overclock profile and fan profile have automatically been applied. But the power limit has been reset to its default. If you want the power limit to persist between reboots, we'll need to do one more thing. So let's go back to the instructions. We'll need to create two new files. So let's first copy this location here. Now go to the terminal and enter sudo nano and paste this location. Push enter and enter your password. Next copy this box here and paste it into the terminal window. Now press ctrl x, then type y and enter to save the file. Now we'll need to do the same thing for another file. So let's copy this location here, go back to the terminal and type sudo nano and paste this location. Now copy and paste this box, but before we save it, we'll need to manually enter our desired power limit. Use the arrow keys to navigate to the three X's and use backspace to remove them, and enter your custom power limit. The default for my card is 250 watts, so I'm going to do a slight reduction here, down to 235. Now enter Ctrl X and type Y to confirm that you want to save the file before exiting. Now all we need to do is copy and paste this last command into the terminal and we're good to go. Now your custom power limit will be automatically applied every time you log in. So I'll go ahead and reboot my system and as you can see here my 235 watt power limit has automatically been applied. So now let's move on to AMD GPUs. We'll be using an application called Core Control and we'll be following the instructions here on its GitLab page. I left the link to it in the video description. But before we begin, it's important to point out that I'm using Kubuntu 22.04 for this section, not 24.04 like I did for NVIDIA. This is because not all features are currently working yet for 24.04. The application itself will work, but we need to do a few extra steps to unlock all the features 
and it looks like these steps are currently broken on 24.04. It might be related to the kernel that's currently being used in 24.04, so I'm sure this bug will be fixed sooner or later. But as of right now, I don't suggest doing this on 24.04. So like I said, I'll be doing this section on Kubuntu 22.04, and older versions should work as well. So let's begin. Now if you're running Arch or Fedora, then Core Control can be easily installed with one of these commands. A few other distros are listed here as well, but let's scroll down to the Ubuntu section. It turns out the repo isn't available by default on 22.04, so we'll need to manually add it. The first thing we need to do is create this file and copy and paste this box into it. So let's copy the location here, then type sudo nano and paste the location. Now copy and paste the box into the terminal and press Ctrl X and then Y and enter to save the file. Now let's go to this link here and copy and paste these two commands. Press enter to confirm that you want to add this repo. Now we can copy and paste this command to install the application. Once that's done, let's go ahead and open it up. So I'll go to the start menu and type core control and click on it to open. You'll be asked for your password. Now click global profile and you'll see a bunch of statistics for your GPU. To set a custom fan curve, click on the box next to ventilation and set it to curve. Now you can use your mouse to drag each point of the curve to your desired setting. Now go to performance mode and change it to advance. This is where you can set a custom power limit, modify the clock frequencies, and apply a voltage offset. But you'll notice the options here are extremely limited in what you can change them to. We'll need to do a few more extra steps to fully unlock these settings. But first let's hit apply in the top right corner and then hit save. Since I modified the fan curve settings and I want to save these changes. Every time you make changes, make sure you hit apply and save. So now let's go back to the GitLab page and then click this link here to set up your system. Now for core control to automatically start up when you log into your system, you'll need to copy and paste one of these commands depending on which version. But it turns out neither of these commands worked for me, and I realized that the auto start folder doesn't exist yet, so we'll need to create this folder. To do this, copy only this section of the command like you see here, but of course your username will be different than mine. Now enter mkdir which stands for make directory, and paste that section of the code like you see here. Now we can run one of the previous commands and it should work. The only difference between these two commands is that one of them has capitalized first letters in core control, while the other command has all lowercase letters. I had to run the line that has all lowercase letters, but if you're running a different distro that has a newer version of this application, then you might need to run the other command instead. The next step will allow you to run the program without needing to enter your password each time. To do this, we'll need to create a new file. But the exact contents of this depends on which version of pull kit your system is running. Copy and paste this command here to find out which version you have. You can see my system has version 0.105 installed. So that means I'll need to create this file here since my version is less than 0.106. If your version is higher, then follow the steps under this section instead. So I'll first copy this location. Then go to the terminal and enter sudo nano and paste this location. Now copy this box and paste it into the terminal. Now use the arrow keys and navigate to your user group and replace this part with your username just like I did here. Now press Ctrl X and save the file. Now this last step is what unlocks access to the advanced voltage and boost frequency settings. And this is the step that's currently not working in Ubuntu 24.04. But like I said, I think this is an issue with the latest kernel and it should be fixed at some point. But anyway, to do this, we'll need to modify the boot parameters for grub. First copy this location here, then go to the terminal and type sudo nano and paste this location. 
Next, go back to the instructions and copy this line here. Now use the arrow keys and navigate to this section. We don't want to remove anything here, but instead we'll be adding another option right after the existing ones that are already here. Push spacebar to add a space here, and then paste the command we just copied. Make sure it looks like how I have it here, then push Ctrl X and save the file. Now all we need to do is copy and paste this last command here into the terminal, and then reboot your system. But keep in mind that while most distros use grub, not every distro uses it. So this section might be different depending on the distro you're using. Also, if you followed my previous guide on refind, then you'll need to edit this file instead. And set the boot parameter just like how you see it here. When you log back in, you should see core control has automatically started up. And when we navigate to the overclock settings, you should see an additional slider to set a voltage offset. And the other sliders are also now unlocked, allowing you to set them to whatever you want. After making your desired modifications, don't forget to hit apply in the top right corner and then save. Also, if you want to modify general settings of the application, click system at the bottom, then click settings at the top right. Click this checkbox if you want core control to start minimize in the tray so that it doesn't pop up every time you boot up your system. And that's it, you should be good to go now. Well, that wraps up today's guide. If you have any thoughts or questions then feel free to drop a comment down below. And if you found this video to be useful then be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more helpful guides like this one. But anyway, that's all for today. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.